Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be demonstrating a landing without the use of the ailerons or elevators. Now for those of you who have uh, flown a lot of these older planes, you would know that they're not always rigged properly. Fortunately, uh, some aircraft do suffer structural failures in flight, which renders uh, normal control of an aircraft uh, rather difficult to do. Uh, you got to remember on a Cessna, like our little Cessna 152, we actually are cable-driven aircraft. So when I'm actually grabbing this yoke and I'm whipping it back and forth like this, I'm actually tugging on a bunch of pulleys and cables that are basically moving my actual control services throughout the rest of the plane. Now, there's some good sides and bad sides. Uh, mechanically speaking, it's actually very simple as far as uh, structural integrity goes. You know, it's very easy to adjust the cable. Now, of course, one of the downsides of cables, of course, is you're gonna have a reduced response on the controls, which, especially for a training plane like this one, not necessarily a bad thing. It's just kind of one of those things that you have to sort of be mindful of. The problem with cables, though, is there's the potential of a cable to snap. The other type of controls, by the way, is they actually will have a pushrod controls, which are incredibly fascinating, because they're actually going to give you the ability to actually control your aircraft by literally pulling a pole that moves. So you have a lot less risk of stretching cables, which is going to impact your performance. And of course, you're probably less likely to actually damage a cable, too, because once you have the pushrods. So what we're going to do today is we're going to simulate as if we've accidentally and by accidentally, I'm going to say we have lost our use of our cables. Our cables have failed, and now we no longer have aileron control in this airplane. Now, that's a bit problematic for us, because obviously we need those in order to safely get ourselves back down here on the ground. So we're going to have to find a way to fly this plane without the use of our controls. Now, there's a couple things we have going for us, and uh, that's one of the biggest ones is going to be trim. Now, unfortunately, Microsoft Flight Sim, as you can see that I just pulled the throttle back, see how we immediately started to descend there? You can see that by reducing power, you're going to keep it about the same exact speed. So all changing the throttle does for us is actually going to be adjusting the pitch of the aircraft. You can see right now in my current trim setting, if I give it a little bit of power, let's go ahead and jam on it real fast and pull it back, you're going to see the nose of my plane rise. You're also going to notice if I pull power back, the nose of the plane is going to descend. Now, when it comes to control of our position, we're going to be having to use our rudder pedals here. Now, one of the things that makes this very tricky is as we turn, remember, not all of your lift is going up anymore. So you're going to have to compensate for that by actually adding a little bit of power in order to maintaining that ideal position across the horizon. Now, this is where your visual flying skills come in really, really handy here, because uh, without them, it's going to be very interesting. That also means as we come out of the turn here, we're going to have to be very, very precise and really, really take our time to get lined up with that runway that we have down on the ground. Now, many of you are probably going to say, well, wait a minute, uh, don't we have the ability to go ahead and uh, use those lovely cables, uh, the ones attached to our trim? And the answer is yes, we do have access to that. And that's exactly what we're going to use in order to get us on the ground. Now, unfortunately for me, or fortunately for me, depending on how you look at it, my trim control is on my joystick. So if you see my little yoke uh, start twitching, it just means I'm making a trim adjustment. So what we're going to do is we're going to trim the aircraft for our landing situation. Now, what I need to do is I need to get this thing at the correct speed and then trim my aircraft. Now, remember, trim is speed based. It is not based on your angle. So as you set the trim, if I set the trim for 60 knots, it's going to maintain 60 knots regardless. And then we're just using our power settings in order to control the pitch that we're actually approaching at. So right now you can see I'm, at, I'm maintaining about 60 knots. And again, you can see my yoke is not twitching. And I can see my nose is slowly starting to hike up there. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it a couple taps down trim. So at this point, we're actually flying the plane completely with the trim and completely with the uh, rudders themselves. Remember, as you turn, you're going to be losing rudder effectiveness here because I'm not ready. Sorry, your nose is going to dip. So you have to compensate by an increase in power. So what we're doing right now is we're flying the plane completely with the trim. Now, the thing you have to remember, though, is our flaps are all the way down right now, which is actually a good thing for us. It's going to make it a little bit safer. Now, do you see how the nose is starting to sink? I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of power without making an adjustment to my trim. Now, that's what's going to go ahead and give us that last little bit of nose. You can see it takes very, 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 very little nose to go ahead and get this thing all set back up again. Once I pull that throttle back, you can see it likes to sink immediately. So you have to realize that it's got that delay built into it. So what we're going to have to do now is we're actually going, again, not touching the ailerons, not touching the elevators, is we're going to have to play with that trim all the way down to the ground. Now, keep in mind at any point, of course, whoa, that's flight simulator trim for you. You could run into that problem. So as we start getting closer, we can add power, add power. And of course, as we get close to the ground, oh! <laughs> see how the nose keeps wanting to climb? I can go ahead and kill my flaps. So as you can see, uh, once you've got the trim set, it's simply a matter of using the throttle to keep you lined up. Um, the key thing there that you really, 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 really got to remember, though, is we have to go ahead and get it so that it's the speed we need for our approach 
and then simply give it that little tap of gas at the last second. Once we start playing with that trim really, really rapidly, we make it difficult. The other part that's really important, and again, you've noticed my ailerons, of, um, I've not touched my elevator this entire time, and I've not touched my ailerons this entire time, is you have to keep in mind when you're working with your feet that you're basically going to be losing, that nose is going to drop on you. So unless you add a little bit of power when you do so, that's going to make it very, very challenging for you to maintain that appropriate attitude. And again, not a pretty landing, but it was not going to be a pretty landing. You can always lift up your flaps also if you need to shorten that landing a little bit. But the key thing is try not to land short of the runway. You know, you can always go off a little bit at low speed. That's a lot better than hitting the edge of it at high speed. Enjoy.